Starship's future blazes. Block 3's new TPS shields, durable boosters rise, and transpiration cooling ignites innovation. Can we master re-entry? Join us with Starship mission updates. Let's conquer the cosmos. Failure is the mother of success, an undeniable truth SpaceX has embraced to achieve its accomplishments. But SpaceX doesn't just learn from failure, they go far beyond. Even after success, SpaceX resolutely redesigns, renews, and continuously tests to aim for maximum reliability, especially for the Starship project. Despite having successfully landed the Super Heavy booster three consecutive times, SpaceX decided to implement a completely new design for the booster's Block 3 hardware. Recently, we've had the opportunity to closely examine these innovations. New component, what appears to be the aft section of a Starship Block 3, has just been moved to the production site. We're not exactly sure of its intended purpose, but it can be speculated that this is either a prototype or a test model used. To evaluate the structural and thermal performance of the aft section of the Block 3 Super Heavy Booster, the aft section is especially critical because it endures substantial aerodynamic and thermal stress during re-entry and landing. While the upper stage requires a robust thermal protection system, TPS for hypersonic re-entry, the booster's aft section still demands adequate protection from the heat generated during its suborbital return, particularly around the engine bay. You might remember the first tower catch landing of a super heavy Booster 12 using Mechazilla. A burst of flames appeared to engulf the aft section of the booster, followed shortly by a small explosion that damaged the surface layer, leaving it torn and structurally compromised. As a result, Booster 12 was deemed heavily damaged and unsuitable for reuse in any future flights. For this reason, it's hard not to speculate that SpaceX is modifying the booster design to achieve better landing durability. Now, we're finally seeing the results of what appears to be a completely new upgrade, very likely a Pathfinder version ahead of full-scale production. Can Block 3 withstand the flames? Let's dive in. From lessons learned to bold redesigns, let's explore Block 3's upgrades. From what can be seen with the naked eye, Super Heavy Block 3 is testing a new TPS for the aft section. These are most likely stainless steel tiles sandwiching a custom, re-entry tile material. This marks a significant shift from earlier booster designs, which reportedly relied on engine shields to protect the aft section. As we know, stainless steel is a hallmark of SpaceX's Starship program, chosen for its high melting point, around 1,110 degrees C coxins for common alloys, durability, and cost-effectiveness compared to traditional materials like aluminum, lithium, or carbon fiber. Looking at some publicly released images, the hexagonal heat shield tiles appear surprisingly sharp and beautifully crafted. Many have speculated that these tiles were manufactured using water jet cutting, which aligns with industry practices. Water jet technology is ideal for precision cutting of metals like stainless steel, producing clean edges without thermal distortion. These cutters use high-pressure water mixed with abrasives to slice through materials several inches thick, making them well-suited for fabricating intricate tile shapes. Additionally, it seems the stainless steel tiles are sandwiched around a custom re-entry tile material, suggesting a composite TPS design. This could involve ceramic or silica-based materials, similar to those used in the Space Shuttle's TPS or on Starship's windward side tiles, which are designed to withstand temperatures up to 1,260 degrees. Wires. The custom re-entry tile material might be a lightweight, high-emissivity insulator that radiates heat away, while the stainless steel provides structural support and oxidation resistance. This layered approach could reduce weight compared to solid ceramic tiles while maintaining effective thermal protection. There's another curious detail worth noticing. Each hexagonal tile appears to have two countersunk holes. We've explored what these could mean. These countersunk points suggest an installation system for the tiles, resembling standoffs with countersunk holes. Standoffs are spacers that elevate the tiles off the booster skin, potentially creating an air gap to enhance insulation or accommodate thermal expansion. Countersunk holes imply that fasteners, likely bolts or screws, sit flush with the tile surface, 
reducing aerodynamic drag and minimizing heat concentration. This setup provides maximum hold down pressure over the hexagonal shape, suggesting an emphasis on strong attachment that can withstand the mechanical stress of launch, re-entry, and landing. Hexagonal tiles are commonly used in TPS designs, such as on the windward side of Starship, because they tessellate efficiently, minimizing gaps and improving thermal distribution. The changes are full of intrigue, but we must remember that we still need confirmation from SpaceX. We're certain this will happen soon, as SpaceX needs to verify that the new design is effective before modifying all their super-heavy prototypes. The booster needs heat shielding for its entire aft section, rather than just on each engine. The removal of the old shields shows that SpaceX is confident the new TPS can directly handle the heat load, potentially simplifying the design and reducing mass. This aligns with SpaceX's goal of minimizing refurbishment between flights, as a robust TPS could eliminate the need for heavy, maintenance-intensive shielding. The new TPS is also designed to protect the Raptor engines and fuel systems during re-entry. The booster experiences aerodynamic heating, less intense than the upper stage, due to its lower velocity around Mach 8 to 9. The TPS may aim to keep temperatures within safe limits for the stainless steel structure and sensitive components, ensuring rapid reusability, a key factor in SpaceX's vision for airline-like operations. What's the future of TPS? Share your ideas below. From robust tiles to revolutionary cooling, let's explore a game-changing idea. When testing for these new heat shields is conducted, it also paves the way for SpaceX to invent even more efficient TPS designs, potentially leading to new thermal protection methods for the upper stage of Starship as it endures the stress of atmospheric re-entry back to Earth. Frankly, thermal protection remains a challenging area that neither SpaceX nor any other rocket company has fully mastered when it comes to maximizing ship protection and achieving quick turnaround reusability. However, a new idea has recently emerged that could potentially change the future of space exploration. Researchers from Texas A&M University, in collaboration with Canopy Aerospace, are developing an innovative 3D printed material that sweats a coolant gas to protect spacecraft during the fiery descent back to Earth. This technology is known as transpiration cooling. Re-entry into Earth's atmosphere is one of the most demanding phases of spaceflight. As a spacecraft plummets through the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, often exceeding 7.5 km CRS, 16,800 meowrms, it encounters extreme friction and compression of atmospheric gases. This generates temperatures that can soar above 2,000 tower de gas, 3,600 de gas, hot enough to melt most conventional materials. To survive this inferno, Spacecraft traditionally rely on thermal protection systems, such as ablative heat shields that burn away during re-entry, or ceramic tiles like those used on the space shuttle, which require meticulous inspection and replacement after each flight. These systems, while effective, are either single-use or labor-intensive to maintain, hindering the goal of rapid, cost-effective spacecraft reusability. The transpiration cooling method developed by Texas A&M and Canopy Aerospace offers a revolutionary alternative. This technique involves a specially engineered material that releases a coolant gas through its porous structure during re-entry. The gas sweats out of the spacecraft's surface, forming a protective layer that serves two critical functions. It cools the material by absorbing and dissipating heat, and it acts as an insulating barrier, preventing the searing atmospheric heat from directly contacting the spacecraft's surface. As Hassan Saadi, an assistant professor of aerospace engineering at Texas A&M, explains, Gas has a very low thermal conductivity. This is why a puffer jacket is so effective. It traps air in these pockets, so it's the insulation from the air keeping you warm, not the solid part of the jacket. Similarly, the coolant gas released by the spacecraft creates a low conductivity shield, significantly reducing the thermal load on the vehicle. At the heart of this innovation is a cutting-edge material developed by Canopy Aerospace, a 3D-printed silicon carbide composite. Silicon carbide is renowned for its exceptional strength and heat resistance, making it an ideal candidate for aerospace applications. However, 
What sets this material apart is its carefully designed porosity, which allows the coolant gas to permeate and sweat through microscopic channels. This porous structure must strike a delicate balance. It needs to be strong enough to endure the immense aerodynamic pressures and thermal stresses of re-entry, yet permeable enough to release the coolant effectively. To validate the performance of this innovative material, the research team at Texas A&M is conducting rigorous tests in controlled environments that simulate the extreme conditions of re-entry. These experiments focus on two key metrics, the material's ability to sweat coolant gas consistently and the effectiveness of the gas layer in insulating the spacecraft. As William Matthews, a fourth-year PhD student leading the testing efforts, explains, we should see that the material surface is cooler at hypersonic speeds when the coolant flow is introduced than the baseline when no coolant is present. The tests involve subjecting prototype samples to high-speed airflow and intense heat, mimicking the hypersonic conditions of re-entry. By comparing the material's performance with and without coolant flow, researchers can quantify the cooling effect and assess the gas layer's insulating properties. Early results are promising, but the team is exploring a range of variables, including the type of coolant gas, the rate of gas release, and the material's porosity to optimize the system's performance. The transpiration cooling system offers several significant advantages over conventional TPS. First, it eliminates the need for ablative heat shields, which are destroyed during re-entry and must be replaced for each mission. Second, it avoids the maintenance challenges associated with ceramic tiles which are prone to damage and require extensive inspections and repairs between flights. By contrast, a transpiration-cooled spacecraft could theoretically land, refuel, and relaunch with minimal turnaround time, dramatically reducing the cost and complexity of space missions. Moreover, the system's reusability aligns with the broader, push toward sustainable and cost-effective space exploration. Companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have already demonstrated the value of reusable rockets, but fully reusable spacecraft capable of frequent orbital missions remains a critical goal. However, several hurdles remain before the technology can be deployed in operational spacecraft. The team is optimistic about the technology's potential, but as Matthews notes, depending on how well the gas permeates the material, there are a lot of potential outcomes for this technology, and these tests should help us decide which direction we want to go. Ongoing experiments will provide valuable data to guide the development process, bringing the vision of a fully reusable spacecraft one step closer to reality. Can transpiration cooling redefine spaceflight? Comment your thoughts below and subscribe to Starship Mission Updates for the latest. This is your mission update team with Starship Mission Updates. From Block 3's blazing shields to transpiration cooling's promise, we're forging the future of space. Thank you for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and keep looking up. Curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always guide us to the stars.